Praise the Lord. Well, it's good to be in God's house on Sunday, and uh, I was down sick last Sunday, so we did not get to continue our Bible study. Um, we are looking at hearing with the ears of our heart, and uh, it's the secret weapon for us for living an overcoming life. How many of you want to live an overcoming life? Amen. So as Christians, we've got a target on our backs. And the enemy loves to come and discourage you. He loves to come and try and trip you up and get you to fall into sin. But we have a secret weapon, and that's called the Holy Ghost. So we have to learn how to tap into the Holy Ghost and hear God's voice in our life. We talked, uh, it would have been like three, three Sundays ago now, we talked about the five voices that we hear in life. We have God's voice, we have Satan's voice, we have our own voice, then we have the voice of the world and the voice of our peers, and uh, the only one that you can fully trust is the voice of God. Um, the Bible says that our hearts are desperately wicked, who can know them, and it's God that tries the reins of our hearts. So, even our own voice, we, we, ha we need to question that. We need to, to go and compare what our voice is saying to the, the word of God. And then the word of God is what we take precedence toward. So today we're going to continue this Bible study about talking about the uh, hearing with the ears of our heart. And so let's, uh, let's open with prayer, and then we'll get started. Jesus, I love you. I thank you today, God, for all that you're doing in us and through us today. I pray, God, that you would just have your will and way in us as we open your word and we seek out truth, God. We seek out the, the uh, secrets that are hidden in the word of God. Help us, Lord, to be uh, good miners, that we would mine those diamonds and those pearls and those rubies, God, that we would be able, God, to learn from them and become better Christians, better men, better women, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. Someone say hallelujah. So whether the input comes to us from the Bible or a spoken word from a teacher or another Christian or some other source, we need to hear it with the ears of our heart. Hearing it with our natural ears only is a first step, but it's taking that and hearing it in our heart, hearing it in our spirit, it would be another way to say that, in order for it to become effective and to bring forth the work that God desires in us. Adam gave up the position of communicating intimately with God when he partook of that tree of knowledge of good and evil. He chose knowledge over God's voice. He chose intellect over the spirit of God. And so Adam chose to depend on his own intellect to guide him and direct him rather than hearing God. And so Jesus is the one that we know bought back that opportunity for us to communicate intimately one-on-one -on -one with Jesus Christ, with God Almighty. Prayer is both speaking and hearing from God. I'm going to say that one more time. Prayer is both hearing and speaking to God. It's not just a one-way communication. 
it, it goes both ways. Amen. You talk to God and then you shut up and you listen to what God says back. So there are different levels of hearing from God. Different levels and we need to understand what those levels are. The first level of hearing from God is that we are sinners saved by grace. We need to understand that Christ died to save us from our sin. And if we have not received that revelation yet, and we have not acted upon it yet by being obedient to the gospel message, we need to open our Bible and study until we get that revelation. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, amen, that, that we who believe on him should not perish but have everlasting life. That's the promise of your Bible. So after receiving that first word, we need to continue on our journey. We need to mature in Christ. And that's part of the reason why we come to church. It's part of the reason why we show up on a regular basis so we can hear the word of God. Some Christians do not hear God at all. Some Christians, they, they don't hear God's voice, they don't hear the word, they don't hear anything, and you might question their Christianity, but many do not hear clearly, and they're never quite sure what they've heard when they hear something from God. They don't have deep enough roots that the word of God is able to penetrate and give them direction and understanding. Others, they're not even sure that they're supposed to hear from God. So according to the Bible, it is natural for Christians to hear God's voice. We should hear God talk to us. We need to hear God talk to us. We should desire that. And so we want to make sure that we are open to that and we allow God to, to unfold his plan to us through the word of God, through prayer, through fasting, through the, the different ways that God has given us that we can uh, tap into the spirit of God and know what God is trying to tell us. To know God's plan and power, we must stop partaking of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. We need to quit trying to figure it out on our own and then tap into the Holy Ghost and try allowing God to move on us, to talk to us, to direct us. And then we need to pray that we would hear him accurately. That we would, that voice I'm hearing, that I identify as the voice of God in my life, I want to make sure that I'm hearing what he's saying. Let's go to John 10, 27. I got some uh, scripture here for you. John 10, 27 says, My sheep, what? Hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. So if you're one of his sheep, you should hear his voice. Let's go to Psalms 85 and verse 8. Psalms 85 and verse 8. I will hear what God the Lord will speak. Look what it says. I will hear what God the Lord will speak, for he will speak peace unto his people and unto his saints, but let them not turn again to folly. We should allow God's voice to give us direction and keep us from turning to those, those things that are vain, those things that are worthless, those things that lead to folly. 
Acts 4, 19 and 20. Acts 4, 19 and 20. Praise God. It says, but Peter and John answered and said to them, whether it is right in the sight of God to listen to you, to man, more than to listen to God, you judge. For we cannot help but speak the things which we have seen and heard. So they were, they were told not to preach in the name of Jesus anymore. And their answer was, should we listen to you? or listen to what God tells us to do. You judge and tell me what is right. And so, of course, we know the answer is we need to listen to God. John 16, verse 12 through 14. John 16, 12 through 14 says, I, and that's I is Jesus, still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. However, when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak on his own authority, but whatsoever he hears, he will speak. He will tell you things to come. He will glorify me, for he will take of what is mine and declare it unto you." So the, the Holy Ghost leads us into all truth. But we have to allow the Holy Ghost to talk to us so that we can be led into all truth. If you've closed off your spiritual ears and you're not willing to hear what the Holy Ghost is saying, then you're not going to hear the voice of God. But the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of Truth, will guide you into all truth. John 16, 25. Before service here, we had a, a gentleman pull up in front of the, the church and was yelling through the open door, saying, is anybody in there? And Sister Karen got up and ran and talked with him, and I'm hearing him talking out there on the, on the porch, and he's hungry for truth. He wants truth. But I, I told him, he goes, what do you believe? And I said, well, we don't believe in the Trinity. And he's like, you don't believe in the Trinity? That was like a big, big shocker to him. But and I started explaining to him, because he was saying, I'm a Messianic Jew. And I'm thinking, okay, here's our opportunity. He won't believe in a trinity. So I, I told him, I said, we believe what the Jews believe. We believe in one God. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. But he, he at first was like, no, but I started quoting scripture to him, giving him truth. And then he opened up, and he's like, oh, okay. Well, that sounds like scripture to me. And I'm like, it's, it is. It's truth. The Holy Ghost will lead you to all truth. I grew up in a Methodist church. Others of you in this congregation have been to other denominal churches. They, Brother Dennis, you're Lutheran, correct? Brother Dennis, you're Lutheran? Is that the church in Ferndale? Is yes, yes. They, they believe it's three, three different They lives. do. And they it, years before that they had to be wrong. Right, right, very good. And Karen, what church were you attending? So, and they're Trinitarian, correct? So, so there's, it, when you open the scripture, it, it, it's an easy proof that God's one, not three. And so when you start looking at truth and you start hearing the, the word of truth, the voice of truth, you start to understand that there's one God and only one God. John 16, 25 says, These things I, and again the I is Jesus, 
I have spoken to you in a figurative language, but the time is coming when I will no longer speak to you in a figurative language. But here he says, but I will tell you plainly about the Father. I will tell you plainly of the Father. And so the word of God points to Jesus Christ and that Jesus Christ is the Father manifest in flesh. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 1.20. 1 Corinthians 1.20. says, where is the wise, where is the scribe, where is the disputer of this world? Hath not one, hath not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? So the understanding that, that the things that the world cause, calls wise or the things that the world puts their faith in are different than what God puts, uh, the word of God puts our faith in. So with that, let's go to um, chapter 2, verse 1, 1 Corinthians 2 and 1, it says, And I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you, save Jesus Christ and him crucified. And he said, and I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. So putting your trust in somebody that can talk well is not necessarily the best thing to do. God says, I'm going to use the things that are looked at as foolish by the world. By the foolishness of preaching, God chose to save the world. Let's go to verse 12. And we're going to read through verse 16. It says, Now you have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of what? Of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us from God or of God, which things also we speak not in the words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Ghost teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. So man's wisdom will not give you the spiritual understanding that God wants you to have. It takes the Holy Ghost to lead you into all truth. Verse 14, but the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. You can read that Bible that you hold in your hands without the Holy Ghost and not understand a word it's telling you. I can remember my father. My father was a good, moral man, okay? He did not have the Holy Ghost. He had not yet been baptized in Jesus' name, but he was a good man. And he would read, he read that Bible cover to cover like he would read War and Peace. He read it like a novel, and he had questions. He didn't understand what it was saying because he didn't have a spiritual understanding. So we sat down and I started doing Bible studies with him. And by the time we were done, he had been baptized in Jesus' name and God had touched him and filled him with the gift of the Holy Ghost. So that helped him to understand what God was saying in his word. You can read it and not get a lick of good out of it. And I hate saying that, but it's true. But if you've got the Holy Ghost and you're praying, God, show me truth, then God will help you to understand. 
So verse 15, he that is spiritual judges all things. This guy, Brian, that pulled up in front, he's saying, well, we're not supposed to judge. Judge not lest ye be judged. Well, here's a scripture. It says, he that is spiritual does what? He judges all things. We have to understand that judging people from your carnal flesh is wrong. Okay, but judging people by the Holy Ghost that's in you, we're called to do that. Okay, not judging them and saying you're damned and going to hell, but judging them and understanding where's their weakness, where can I lift them up, where can I help them to become better. Now, that's, that's the Holy Ghost that's helping you to, to judge. So he that is spiritual judgeth all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. Verse 16, for who hath known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him? That, but we have the mind of what? Christ, amen. So 1 Corinthians 1 and 2, the message is clear that God has not chosen the excellency of speech or the wisdom of man to proclaim the deeper hidden truths in his Bible. These mysteries are never received by the intellectual man, but must be revealed by the Spirit of God into the spiritual ear of the heart. Now this brings us to what we're studying about, hearing with the ears of our heart. Look at your neighbor and tell him your heart has ears. Amen. Our heart needs to hear the word of God. <clears throat> so with that, only by the Holy Ghost can any mortal man hear the things that the immortal God has prepared for them who love him? 1 Corinthians 2, going back to verse 6, and we're going to read through verse 10. It says, Howbeit we speak wisdom among them that are perfect, yet not of the wisdom of this world, nor of the princes of this world that might that come to naught. But we speak the wisdom of God in a what? A mystery. Even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto glory. God hides little nuggets in his word. And the only way you see, you're like a good miner, a good gold miner. You're out to find gold if you're a gold miner. And how do you find gold if you're mining for gold? You have to dig for it, right? You have to work for it, amen? So just like that, the word of God is chock full of nuggets, some good gold nuggets and diamonds and rubies and all kinds of, of valuable things that are in the world. How are you going to find them? You got to dig for it. You got to study. Amen. So verse 8, which none of the princes of this world knew, for had they known, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Think about this. If the devil knew what he knows now, he would never have crucified Jesus Christ. When before he died, there was one Jesus, one man of God that he had to worry about. But after he crucified him, after he was in the grave for three days, after he resurrected, after he ascended into heaven, and now he's poured out his spirit into all flesh. Amen. How many Jesus figures does he have to deal with? Well, I'm counting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's nine of us here now. And the devil's like, man, I blew it. I did the wrong thing. I shouldn't have killed him. He didn't know, though. 
So with that, now he knows and he understands the power of God is in the heart of man. It's in us, those of us that have been born again, born of the water, born of the spirit. We now have the power of God and the authority of God to do what God has asked us to do. Can you say amen? amen. So verse 9 says, but as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love them. But God hath revealed them unto us, how? By his spirit. For the spirit searcheth all things, yea, even the deep things of God. This is the hidden wisdom of God. This is the deep mysteries that are going to be heard by us who have ears in our heart to hear what God's speaking. We are able to take what his word is telling us. We take the preached word. We take our prayers and we hear what God says back and we're able to then hold on to those things and, and see them come true. The deep secrets of God are not revealed to those who love anything else more than God. If you love football more than you love God, and you end up staying home on Sunday so you can watch football, you're not going to hear the secrets that God wants to share with you. You know what you're going to hear? Hike! That's what you're going to hear. Amen? You're not going to hear God saying, I love you. I want to use you. I want to direct your life. I want to take you places. And so we want to make sure that we put God where he belongs, and that's first. Amen. Only spiritually mature servants who love God more than anything else will hear the hidden mysteries that God wants to share with you. And, and that comes down to a pure heart. That comes down to one who's not steeped in sin. Okay, that you've got hidden sins that you're you're you know holding back and you're you've got this area of your life that you've not freely given access to God. The Bible says this. It says, "Search me and see if there be anything in me." God, that is, is holding me back, that is sinful, that you don't like. God, search me and see. Show me where I need to let go. And then when God shows you, what do you need to do? Let go. Give it to God. Amen? So we want to make sure that we have a pure heart. Because those without a pure heart will not hear the voice of God. Matthew 13 and uh, verse 10. <coughs> Matthew 13, 10. And we're going to read down to verse 17. So Matthew 13, 10, and the disciples came and said unto him, why speakest to us in parables? You ever wonder why God uses parables? What's a parable? It's a story that shows a spiritual principle. Like the kingdom of heaven is likened unto and then he tells you the story. And that that's really a story, you know, like uh, the, the, a man that found a pearl of great price. And he went and sold all that he had and bought that pearl. 
Okay, that, that's really a spiritual principle about nothing in this world should come between you and Jesus. Okay, if you got to give up something in your life to have Jesus, then give it up. You know, he, he said this, that if your eye offends you, what are you supposed to do? Pluck it out. If your hand offends you, cut it off. Okay, that's, that's not a literal thing, but it's a spiritual principle that God's trying to tell you whatever you're looking at that's not wholesome, that's not godly, quit looking at it. That's how you pluck your eye out, okay? Not a literal pulling your eye out of its socket. Don't go do that, okay? That's not what he's talking about, but he's saying quit looking at it. If you got to cut your hand off, it's because you're touching something that is not wholesome, that's going to take you to hell. He said it's better to go into heaven without a hand than it is to go into hell fully armed. Amen? So we want to make sure that we understand the parables are really spiritual principles wrapped up in a story. Verse 11, he answers their question, said, because it's given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. In other words, I tell you a story, and you understand the stories about a spiritual principle, but people that aren't hungry for me, it's going to go right over their head. They won't get it. Okay, so we want to make sure that we understand that Jesus is trying to lead us to heaven. Verse 12, for whosoever hath, to him it shall be what? Given, and he shall have more abundance, and whatsoever hath, whosoever hath not, from him it shall be taken away, even that he hath. See, we, we live in a society that believes that we're to give to those that have not. Okay, and I understand the principle that we need to help some people to get off the floor, so to speak. But Jesus says, if you, if you got it, I'm going to give you more. To those that don't got it, you're going to get nothing. And remember, he's talking in spiritual parables. He's trying to teach you about spiritual things, not money. Okay, of course we feed the poor. Of course we help people. But in a spiritual understanding, if you've got it, you got the Holy Ghost, you got the Spirit of God, and you want more of God, God's going to give you more. If you don't got the Holy Ghost, and you're not even interested in God, God's not going to force it on you. You understand what I'm saying? He's going to try and lead you, but if you don't respond, he's going to go, okay, you don't want me. Think about this. You know, people that someday they're going to stand before God and they're going to have to give an account for their life. Okay? Every one of us will. But those that don't want God here in this life and they say no to God, someday they're going to stand before God and God will not force himself on them. See, the, the, the atheist says, well, is, a loving, is God loving so much that he would send somebody to hell? Well, he loves them enough not to force himself upon them. So who made the choice not to have God? They did. They, they chose in this life I don't want God. So God says, okay, I love you enough not to force you. Okay, in, in the natural, if you force yourself on someone, that could be either abuse or rape. Okay, God's not one to abuse. 
And God's not one to force himself on anyone. So we need to understand the to him who has more abundance will be given. God wants to pour it out on you if you're open to having God. Okay? And if you don't want God, God says, I'm not going to force you. Verse 13. Therefore, speak I to them in parables, because they seeing, they don't see, and hearing, they hear not, neither do they understand. And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah, which saith, By hearing ye shall hear, and, and shall not understand, and seeing you shall see, and shall not perceive. For this people's heart is wax gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes they have closed." lest at any time they should see with their eyes and ear, hear with their ears and should understand with their heart. Understand with their what? Heart. heart. Okay? Because they hear with your heart. And it says that, praise the Lord, I lost my spot. Got all excited about that. And should be converted and I should heal them. But blessed are your eyes, for you see, and your ears, because you hear. So verily I say unto you, that many prophets and righteous men have desired to see those things which you see, and, and have not seen them. And to hear those things which you hear, and they have not heard them. So again, we are blessed because we've got the Holy Ghost. Think about this. You could, be, could have been living in Old Testament time. The Holy Ghost had not yet been given. You would have loved God to bring a lamb to kill your lamb and, and cover your sins. That, that's how you would have shown your love for God. It would have been physical, it would have been sacrificial, it would have been bloody, it would have stunk. I mean, I don't know about you, but when uh, burning flesh on the altar is, is being burnt, it, I, it doesn't smell real good, okay? It's not like a barbecue, okay? It, it's not the same. Okay, now barbecues, I love barbecues. Okay, I'm going to get sidetracked here. Okay, but that's not what was going on in the Old Testament tabernacle. It was bloody, it, it stunk, it, it was, uh, you know, just gruesome. And, and so the offering was to burn that thing to a crisp on the, on the, the altar, the brazen altar, to, to cover and to be an offering for our sin, the burnt offering, if you will. And so that, that's the way you would know and love God in the Old Testament. But we're blessed because we've got the Holy Ghost and Jesus Christ has paid the penalty for us. Let's go to Mark 12, 29. Mark 12, 29. Look what it says. It says, And Jesus answered him, The first of all the commandments is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Next verse. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy what? Heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. We love God with our whole heart. And that's what he's calling us to do. Only a pure heart will hear the hidden mysteries of the word of God. The desire to have a pure heart does not make it so. You can desire to do right and not do right. Okay, If you continue to do that, 
you get to a point where you become calloused and not willing to do right. But if you want to do right, you love God, you want to please God, then you will find a way by the power of the Holy Ghost to overcome your flesh and do what's right. The intent of a pure heart is not enough. It's from the abundance of the heart that the mouth speaketh. Amen? So if I, I want to do right but I'm not able to do right, I need to overcome and start speaking what is right. And then God will help me to overcome my weakness. So the Lord compared a pure heart to good soil. He said the soil was cleared of the weeds and the rocks and softened in preparation for receiving the word of the kingdom and maturing into, into fruition. And the wayside soil or the hardened soil of the heart might be compared to a wounding in our life. It would be compared to a hard heart on heavy footsteps of men and the wheels of the ox carts and chariots that went up and down the road and it pressed down the soil, the heart soil. This hardened soil must be healed. The way that it's healed is by taking a plow to it and breaking up the fallow ground, the hard heart. The the, the word of God is that plow. The word of God is what breaks up our hard heart. So we need to have preaching. We need to have God talk to us. And we need God to be able to speak to us and give us direction. Amen. That's why it's so important to come to church. It's why it's so important to be a part of the body of Christ. We need each other. Look at your neighbor and tell him, I need you. We need each other. Amen. You know, sometimes the preacher's not around. And so you, you may be sharing something with somebody that's a fellow believer, and that fellow believer can speak a word of faith into your heart. You can say, you know, you may be saying, man, I'm about ready to give up. It doesn't seem like anything's going right. And, and the fellow believer, your brother, your sister says, don't give up. He that endureth unto the end, the same shall be what? Saved. Okay, so don't give up five minutes before the miracle. Amen. Don't give up right before God does what you've been asking him to do. So that, that's part of hearing with your heart. It doesn't have to come from the preacher. It doesn't have to come from your pastor. It can come from even a, a young child can speak a word of faith to you. And out of the mouths of babes, amen, out of the mouths of babes that it just, it's a lightning bolt of revelations. You're like, oh my God, I am so dim-witted. I was going to say something worse, but, but praise the Lord. I am so, so, you know, dim-witted that I didn't, didn't understand that thing. But your brother, your sister are able to lead you and help you, and you get to do the same thing for them. You can turn around and give them a word of faith when they're on their last leg. Amen? So with it, we want to understand that, that through all the, the trials of life, whether it's the wayside, whether it's the stony ground, whether it's the thorn in the thicket, whether it's good ground, that we need the word of God and the spirit of God to give us revelation and understanding. Okay, I am just about done here. 
So the, the question comes down to whether or not we truly love God. If you love God, you're going to hear his words. He said, if you love me, what? Keep my commandments. Amen? This is a test on, on your, your depth of love for God. And it's not the easy commandments that are, you know, are the test. It's the hard commandments that are the test. You know, it, in John 6, how many of you are familiar with, with Jesus' words, eat my flesh and drink my blood or you have nothing in me. Amen? That's a hard saying. And there were disciples of Christ that turned and walked away. They're saying that's cannibalism. That's not, that's not righteous. That's not godly. That's, that's, that's sick. But Jesus wasn't talking physically to eat his flesh. He wasn't talking about physically to drink the blood. And, and so he turns to his disciples and says, are you going to leave me too? And what did Peter say? Thou art the Christ. To whom else shall we go? Only you have the words of eternal life. Where are we going to go, Jesus? And it's you got to have that type of an attitude when it comes to some of the commandments that you see in your Bible. You know, even, you know, let's just use this one. Come out from among them. Be ye separate, saith the Lord. Touch not the unclean thing, and I'll be a father unto you, and you'll be my children, my sons, and my daughters. Having therefore these precious promises, you know, how should we act and live in this present world? We need to take that and, and understand that it's telling us there are some things in my life that are out of bounds. If I go this way and I get to a, a point in my life where I'm questioning what I'm doing, is this really of God? It's probably not of God. Okay, and if I go this way and I find some other things that are, are, are stretching and testing my faith, I need to stop and say, okay, God, get me back on the middle road, the the narrow road and help me to, to choose wisely. Help me to hear with my heart. Help me to know that it's the spirit talking to me. Help me to know that it's God Almighty that is talking to me. Can we lift our hands right now and just pray, Jesus, Lord, help us today to walk that narrow path. Help us to, to walk in that, that righteous way, God. To hear with our ears and to see with our eyes, God, those things that you prepared for us, God. In the name of Jesus, help us to be Christians, God. Help us not to just wander aimlessly through life wondering if we're in the will of God or not in the will of God. But help us today, Lord, that we would hear your voice and obey your commandments. In the name of Jesus, we give you thanks, we give you glory, we give you honor. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. And I'm going to end with one scripture Matthew 13, 9. Matthew 13 and 9. Look what this says. It says, Who hath ears to hear, let him hear. Amen. We want to hear with the ears of our heart. So God bless you. We've got about 10 minutes or thereabouts till Sister Rebecca will be here to lead us in, uh, in uh, our prayer and, or in worship. And we will uh, get our 
uh, live stream up and ready to go so we can get started at 2.30. God bless you.